It's not that hard to get to five, 10 grand a month in passive recurring revenue from your vacant land deals. Welcome to video one in a brand new masterclass that I'm doing with Joe McCall. Joe, hey, Jerry, glad really to be excited here. to do this with you. You're, you flew all the way here from St. Louis. We're sitting here in the, in the gazebo office in Puerto Rico. Beautiful. Beautiful. We planned out this, uh, this entire series of videos we're gonna do all about land flipping maybe a little bit of land investing, but we're gonna be going through A to Z in this series, yeah. start to finish, how to really do a land flipping business. And yeah. Joe, you are the expert at this. You're very good at it. You've been doing it for a long time. Uh, you teach step-by-step -step how to do this. So I'm excited to be here yeah. as a fan. And okay. we're friends, right? But I love your show. I just oh, love what you're you. doing here. Yeah, equally, I really love that uh, you give so much to people. You've got a heart of gold. You really do care about putting out really great content and valuable information. And so we're gonna to try to do that again in this masterclass and really show you how to build a land flipping business and really make money at land flipping. And on this first video, we're gonna focus primarily on why land over houses, why land is actually in a lot of ways mm -hmm. easier than houses. Yeah. It's this little hidden treasure because I would say, you know, 90% or whatever it is of, of real estate people, they think houses. Yeah. I did certainly yeah. when I got started and most of the content I talk about is houses. Most of the people I meet are doing houses in some way or another. A little bit people start to venture into commercial and do other things like multifamily or self storage. Yeah. Uh, some people move into some development, but land is like this, this little niche opportunity right underneath everybody's noses, yeah. right? And nobody really thinks about it. So well, this is talk, why talk I about did this. This is why I got into it because I have four kids, homeschool them just like you do here. Yeah. And uh, I wanted them to get in the business with me. Yeah. And I've been doing houses for a long time. I did a lot of lease options. We still do them occasionally, right? And I did a lot of wholesaling for a little while. And then um, I wanted something that my kids could do with me, right? So I had two teenage boys at the time. They were like 14 and 15 mm -hmm. years old. And uh, you know, houses, they're easy, but there's still, there's a lot of stuff you got to learn about it. Like ARV. Comping. Uh, comping properties. Comping is, just comping alone is a, is a mm -hmm. big process. It takes a lot of time, yeah. practice, yeah. repetition to really learn how to do it well. Well, then learning how to estimate repairs, right? And, and another animal, repairs. I, yeah. I was thinking like, how can I train my boys? My girls are young. I have two girls, two boys. But how can I train them to... Uh, understand those kinds of nuances and the complexity of repairs and ARVs and comps. And, and then uh, as a teenager kid trying to talk to a seller, yeah. trying to determine their motivation, build uh -huh. a little rapport, make them an offer on, yeah. on a house that they've lived in for 30 years, that they have a deep emotional attachment or a lot of money tied into that, you know, and then trying to negotiate with them on the phone and all the tricks and how you do that. And uh, I had some friends that were doing land and I thought, I wonder if I could, um, teach my boys how to do vacant mm. land. So uh, I started investing in my education, which I yeah. always say this, you know, the most important real estate you'll ever invest in is the four inches between your ears. So, so I bought some courses and programs, <clears throat> got some coaching and went to some workshops, started learning land. The crazy thing is I learned more when I go to these workshops, I learned more from the other people that are doing deals there sometimes than I do from the speakers. So I started really digging in and other people's businesses mm -hmm. and what they were doing. And I met this one guy who started telling me how he does it because for him, it's, it's a lifestyle business, right? So um, I started developing, doing it, and then developing these systems that I could use to automate a lot of it because mm. I didn't want my boys to have to talk to sellers. Um, so we started doing simple direct mail, started sending people from the direct mail to voicemails, and then the voicemails would come in and my sons then, I would train them how to evaluate the land deals and then come up with offers and send the offer. So we wouldn't talk to sellers until after they got our offers mm. at 25, mm -hmm. 30 cents on the dollar. And then I started to figure out it's a numbers game and we would get one out of every 25 to 30 offers accepted. And uh, that's without ever even talking to the sellers, depending on the market that you're in. And so I started training my boys how to do this. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started then, and then we started later getting, uh, we'll get into this, how we sell the deals. but. Um, we, within a span of a couple years, me and my boys and the deals we did together, I was doing deals on my own, right? Yeah. We did over $150,000 in net, net, net profits, yeah. flipping vacant mm. land deals in about four or five different states. With we're, your we're, teenagers. With my teenagers. Yeah. It's How crazy. Cool is that? So I thought, 
this is cool. And then I started teaching other people how to do it. And uh, it's, it's funny because I've been teaching people for a long time how to do houses. But uh, honest, like I get, I get probably two to three times the testimonials from students doing land in, mm. in terms of success than they were with houses. And we'll talk about that well, in this video I mean, why, right? If, if you can get teens to be successful doing yeah. it, I mean, really can't anybody do it, yeah. right? I mean, like, for sure. That's, well, can. there's a lot of people that I work with that are English is a second language. Yeah. They've got a full-time job working 50, 60 hours a week. They don't have the time to, and they don't want to lose their nights and weekends, right? Mm -hmm. So this is something that you could do on the side with your kids or on your own, full-time if you want, or part-time. And it just kind of automates a lot of the stuff that's still important, like yeah. we're still doing house deals. This is just kind of like another tool in our tool belt. Well, and you mentioned some automation and some marketing and things, but t correct me if I'm wrong, Joe, but I think land over houses, I would say probably the, the biggest benefit to doing land flipping over house flipping is much less competition. Oh man, jeez. Is that the number one yeah. like, benefit? Because, I mean, if you think about it right now, when it comes to houses, and it comes to flipping, it's a very competitive strategy well, now. It's a, you know, like, a, it's, yeah. it's, when I first got started, flipping was kind of an obscure thing. Wholesaling for sure was like, nobody even knew what that was. Mm -hmm. um, now flipping because of TV shows is like, everybody know, at least understands the concept. A lot of people get into the industry and technology has allowed the data to be very mainstream, mm -hmm. right? And We've we've actually facilitated this with our software PropWire, yeah. where it's free. We're going to be talking about which PropWire. We'll, we'll talk about it. I love PropWire. It's really cool, but the data now is available for everyone, yeah. really. And now it's really what separates the successful from the not successful is really just people that are willing to apply, yeah. put put in the effort. Yeah. But land becomes this thing that just not that many people are doing. Well, it, it's getting. Yeah, so let me tell you that. Like, I've always loved direct mail, right? Mm -hmm. It's my favorite channel because you can target the homes that you want, the sellers that you want, and the areas that you want. And then when they respond to a postcard, the chances of you need fewer of those leads than you do with other kinds of leads. So I've always loved direct mail. But when I was yeah. getting started, when we first met, you know, I, it was it was normal to get three to five percent response rates on, on your, direct mail on direct yeah mail. meaning Postcards. meaning if you when you mail out three to five percent we'll pick up the phone and call yeah yeah now with direct mail for houses anymore you're lucky if you get half of one percent yeah half 1 of one percent amazing you're doing yeah good. so um i started doing direct mail for land and i'm getting three to four times the response rates now we're doing cold calling for land and you know, where our VAs before, when they do our cold calling for us, before they would get one lead, maybe two out of four or five hours of cold mm -hmm. calling. Now we're getting six, seven to eight, sometimes more leads per four or five hour window of cold so calling. So that's just showing that there's much less competition yeah, yeah. And in the land business. Th this is, the, I think, the biggest reason why land is better in a lot of ways. And by the way, we're not knocking houses. Like houses, you can make, there's, there's a lot of advantages to houses that land doesn't have. Yeah. Um, but we can get into that later if you mm -hmm. want. But like the, one of the biggest reasons why I like land so much is the seller is not as emotionally attached mm -hmm. to that vacant lot, right? So it's not like they have a thou hundreds of thousands of dollars of their money into it. It's not like they've been living there for 20 years. A lot of the land we buy, you know, they bought it six, seven years ago, they've not used it. Maybe their husband bought it 20 years ago. Probably 90% of it is is 100% uh, equity, meaning people yeah, don't finance no, land. There's no right? debt on it. Yeah, right? there's no debt on it. What I, what I, the way I like to look at land from all the land deals that I've done is what I've, what I've noticed with sellers is um, they've, already, they've already gone through the, what I call the emotional write-off of yeah. their investment. And what I mean by that is most of the time they've owned that land for a while. Whatever they spent when they bought it, they've now emotionally written that off. Meaning they're not like, man, I, I, bought, this, I bought this piece of land for 10 grand. I'd really like to make a 12% return on my money. Or I'd really like to double my money. It's like, I bought this land, I haven't used it. I haven't done anything with it. I had plans. Or maybe we go out there once in a while and go fishing or whatever, ride the four wheelers. Uh, or it depends on what it is. Maybe I bought it because I thought it was an up and coming area or I was going to build on it and flip or whatever the reasons. We'll talk about the different yeah. type of land investors or land use. But now as time's gone by, in their mind, they're like, 
you know, I, I've there. I'm not trying to get a gain. I would just like to maybe get it out of my life, stop paying property taxes, yeah. get some cash back in my pocket. So then, so then now there's not this motivation to make a return. It's more like I'm just tired of it, want to get rid of it. Houses you get attached to mm-hmm. because it has immediate inherent value, right? Like. Uh, this was we can rent it or we could fix it and flip it. I so grew up in it. All the things, right? And so there's just a much different attachment yeah. to land than houses. Well, which is why we buy our properties at 25, 35 cents on the dollar, right? Yeah. And uh, believe it or not, there's still a high demand for these vacant lots mm-hmm. out in the middle of nowhere either. So there's there's lots that are out in the middle of nowhere, or there's infill lots where people build homes. So there's still as high there's a high demand now. One of the advantages to houses is that there's there's even a higher demand for houses. Like there's always going to be people that are looking for houses to buy. Yeah. Um, but with vacant land, there's still a really really high demand from people that are just like, you know, they want a place so they can go camping, ride their four wheelers, go hunting. Yeah. Um, so a lot of people are buying land for investment purposes, right? Mm-hmm. God's not making any more of it. Some of the wealthiest people in the world are the largest private landowners in the U.S., mm-hmm. Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, some of the largest private landowners yeah, land in the Yeah, land banking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's called land banking where people will just buy land to park their money, yeah. to let it sit. They're thinking that that's gonna go up in value, which land is, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the land bankers really like, uh, maybe like the right outside of town, in the corridor where growth is mm-hmm. sort of pushing. You'll yeah. find a lot of land banking investors because they're thinking, you know, they're, they're developing this area. If I sit on this for five years or 10 years, they're gonna be putting a Walmart and shopping and this yeah. land's gonna go up in value. So you have that type of investor. So some properties you look at, you're like, okay, well, what's the ideal use of this? Maybe it's a land bank type of buyer. Uh, you have what I do quite a bit of, which is which is spec flipping. Mm-hmm. So I, I like to buy an infill lot in, an up, in a hot area, not an up and coming, but a, it's hot, yeah. meaning there's lots of building and flipping going on. In those areas, you'll see teardowns happening. Most of those deals I do, we'll buy an old house, tear it down, build a new house. Those are infill lots for flippers that want to build new construction. So we call them infill lots because it's just a lot in a in an area, you know, house, 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 vacant lot, yeah, like yeah. that type of thing. So you have that person, the the land banker. You have the like the mini ranch or the recreational. Well, those are most of my deals, right? Like recreational, recreational buyers. Um, so these are just like there's no there's nothing out there. Usually there's no power, there's no water or septic, no HOAs. There, so there's no restrictions. No restrictions, no HOA. Property taxes are hundred dollars a year, whatever, yeah. super cheap. And people will buy this five or ten acre parcel to go park their RV, to take their four wheelers, to shoot their guns, just get off the grid. Yeah, it's just a Saturday activity, yeah. or you know, like I think of those as like like a mini ranch. Sometimes they'll park like a tiny home on it or something. Those, those deals are best to sell with owner financing, right? Because banks Definitely. don't lend on those properties out there. And right? people will put money down and, and make a payment oh, on it. Oh, it's crazy. For every one buyer we get that wants to pay cash, we get four or five buyers that call us yeah. wanting to do owner financing. It's not that hard to get to five, 10 grand a month in passive recurring revenue yep. from your vacant land deals. Because a lot of these guys that want to buy property to just you know have fun on, they don't want to spend 10, 20 grand, but if they could pay maybe a thousand down, a few hundred a month, mm-hmm. you just do one or two of those a month when you're selling those deals like that. Um, you can get to your monthly cash, cast of, a passive cash flow pretty quickly. And it's very, very passive. There's yeah. no maintenance repairs that you have to do. There's none of the typical landlord headaches when mm-hmm. you're selling land on, on owner financing. So it's a great, you could even buy land on owner financing yeah. and we'll, sell we'll it talk on about owner that. financing, yeah. right? So, because you have so much flexibility, yeah. and I, I, I buy most of my land deals I buy with terms on creative financing because yeah. it's they're so open to it because they've again they've been sitting on it forever, they're willing to be creative more than on houses yeah. for sure. The other the other I think the other type of land would be like development. Mm-hmm. So this is your bigger parcels and where you go and you subdivide it or you mm-hmm. do entitlements. Yeah, yeah, I've got a project right now. I'd love to maybe one of these videos we'll share. It's in Tennessee and I bought it, it was 45 acres, and we could subdivide it into, I think, nine lots. So like the smallest lots are five acre. We have seven five acres, a nine and an 11. And we were able to do it without going through any of the zoning. Mm. So it was literally just pencil it out, get your survey done, and we'll approve it. Because it was, it wasn't, it didn't meet the density, it met the density. So anyway, it was super easy to do. And people think that's intimidating. 
Yeah. But it's actually not. It's 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 very we, easy to do. So we've got costs. We had to clear some land. We had to put a gravel road in so you could get there. I'm paying 15 grand to bring power. Uh, what else are we doing? 15 grand for the survey. But all said and done, I'm going to have these nine lots, and the five acre lots are going to sell for 80 grand, like like fast sales. Like I'm pricing these aggressive. Yeah. This whole deal, turning this whole deal, should be a five hundred thousand dollar deal. Nice. And I'd love to go through all the numbers if we get some time. But the point is, is we found that on PropWire too, which is really cool. But my point with that is, um, I invested, so I, I paid cash, got a phenomenal deal on the on the total piece. Now I'm spending money on doing these value adds, mm -hmm. but then I'm going to flip each of these parcels and make a ton of money. And this is a deal that's like. Nobody's looking at this. Nobody's thinking about, oh, I'm going to buy 45 acres in Sweetwater, Tennessee, yeah. you know, and and do these improvements and flip this. It's mm -hmm. just totally under the radar. Yeah. You know, well, it's, so it's a lot, it's so much fun to be able to recognize and put together a land deal that no one else is even looking at. Yeah. The uh, some of the hottest markets right now are um, in little pockets of the United States that you would never think of. It's not the Nashvilles, the Denvers, the San Diegos, you know. Um, there's areas, pockets in the, around the country where a lot of um, land is being bought and sold and you can go in really quickly and easily and find where these areas are mm -hmm. with software and tools today. Mm -hmm. You can find out who the buyers are, what they're buying, and then you realize, okay, this is what, who, you know, who they, who they are, what they're buying, and you can go find those deals for them. It's wholesaling 101. Reverse engineer. Reverse engineer. Yeah. Go find the sellers that have owned property for over 10 years and uh, that don't live in that area. Send them marketing, postcards or cold call them, and just make a lot of offers. So it's, you know, going back to what we originally started with, I, I think there's still a place for houses. You can still do a lot of houses. But land is so much easier because there's less competition. The sellers are more motivated. And they're more detached from the property. Yep. And Analysis then, is easier. It's easy. Well, yeah, in some ways, depending on, mm -hmm. on where you go. But like, it's easy to come up with offers. Basically, yeah. I just look at what, what can I sell it for and I make an offer at 25, 35% of that. Yeah. Do you guys follow that? So let, so let me kind of make sure this is really clear. This is wholesaling 101, right? So it's yeah. understand your buyer. So when you, when you look at any type of flipping, you want to know, okay, well, what's the end buyer wanting, doing, why, who are they, what are they looking for? What are they paying? When you understand that first, now you're like, okay, well, great. Now I just got to go find sellers who have owned land for a long time, probably mm -hmm. motivated, not doing anything with it. I know who a buyer is and what they'll pay. Now I'm going to go make low offers to sellers. When I get that low offer accepted, I know who I'm taking my deal to. Yeah. I understand the market mm -hmm. enough to take that deal I bought at 20, 30 cents to a buyer that's looking for that type of land. Yeah. And that's that's wholesaling in, in yeah. essence, right? You're matchmaking between sellers and buyers. Yeah. And you're buying these deals for five, ten grand. You could do that on a credit card if you wanted. Um, I you, love that part too. Because where how do you do that with houses? You got to get hard money, yeah. or you got to do straight assignments. Well, how and how we, we use private money on a lot of our yeah. deals, right? And uh, when I can borrow private money um, at loan to value of fifty percent, it's easy mm -hmm. to find money. Right, because yeah. they're so protected. We use title companies; they're in first position, so we can buy these deals. And you can also assign them. You can double yeah, you close. Can assign them. Yeah. Um, I have a student right now who's assigning everything out in California, so they're getting these land, these lots under contract to buy with three months. They're listing them on the MLS. They get the yeah. seller to sign a power of attorney. So they're doing like, like a novation sort of. Yeah, yeah. real simple. They, they, they list it on the MLS and they assign these deals mm -hmm. for an average of $12,000 assignment fees in the desert in California. Yeah. Right? So you just find the demand. Where are people buying properties right now? Yeah. And then you find the people that own that what they want. You contact them, make a bunch of offers. One out of every 20 to 30 gets accepted. And you just turn around and you, you, you hand these deals over to your buyers. Yeah, love it. That's the simple. So in, in, in the series, we'll break this down in more detail. But we really hope you're excited about this whole masterclass we're doing on land. Really hope that you're, can, you're, you're just kind of going to open your mind to different ways of looking at making money in real estate. Uh, to me, flipping is flipping. So I always look at flipping like, okay, well, what are the best opportunities in the marketplace right now, yeah. right, given, given this time? Because that shifts quite a bit. And whenever you can find a competitive advantage in the marketplace, 
that's a door that's opening for you. Yeah. And I, I like to be, I don't like to identify as you know, a flipper or a rehabber or a wholesaler or a buy and holder or any of those things. I like to identify as an opportunist. Yeah. And an opportunist means that you're you're open and willing to see the, see the market and where the best opportunities are. And if you can have that mindset, I think when those doors open and you're willing to take a step into that door, you just have tremendous yeah. success in, in this business. So I, I think uh, we're gonna, this is video one here, so stay tuned. Be on the lookout. We're gonna put a link to um, the playlist so that you can watch these all depending on when you come into the series since we're putting this here on the YouTube channel. And guys, uh, Joe is really taking this entire strategy of flipping and made it into a process that you can learn, follow step by step. We're gonna be breaking it down in this series. But he's put together this really cool toolkit mm. which has all these resources that can really help you get like your first land deal you know, in as little as 30 days. So yeah. you come in, use these resources. Maybe you could share a little bit about what's in this. It's free, by the way, yeah. it's free, totally free. I told Joe, I said, Joe, if you're gonna come on the channel, we love to give away lots of valuable stuff for free. Oh, so isn't this guy the best? <laughs> isn't this guy the best? Like, you go into your, your the description of his YouTube videos and he's giving like away 50 different free things. <laughs> so I stole some yeah. of his ideas and I came up with, I call it the Land Flippers Toolkit. Tell us about and, it. Well, I got about nine things in there and I don't have cool. a list of what's in it right now, but I got things like how to find the best markets, the scripts to use with realtors, mm. how to find the buyers, my contracts are in there. I have uh, regular purchase and sale agreements, option contracts. Um, I've got a bunch of really cool tools and resources, completely free. The link free. will be in the description down below. Yeah. I want you guys to Thank tell me. Thank you for putting that together. Well, That's I, amazing. I want your. I want you guys to tell me in the comments who gives be away better. Who's, <laughs> whose toolkit is better, Jerry's <laughs> toolkit or my toolkit? I, so my my goal is to make mine better than Jerry's. Oh, okay. Awesome. Well, Joe, thank you again so much for putting that together, guys. That link's below. Get that. If you're serious about land, get that resource. Oh. It's going to be a game changer. Can I add one more thing? Yeah. It's not in there, but I will. How about that calculator, that software that I have? Can I add it into that kit? Yeah. Would that be all right? For sure. All right. So you're the one giving the cool free stuff away. <laughs> we were talking about maybe doing two or three different things, but let's okay. just do let's one. Just add it in there. And uh -huh. I'll, I have the software that will help you analyze land deals and come up with a cash offer and an owner financing offer, and then give you a, a, it'll fill out the contracts and the forms for you, and it will even give you like a letter and an email that you can send to the sellers. That is really cool. So it's an automated offer yeah. tool. It's guys, I mean like, so who, how much easier it gets than that? Who's got the better kit? You guys tell me in the comments. You might, you might have beat me out with this one. Yeah, this is really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, Joe. Guys, leave a comment, let us know questions you have. We'll try to make sure we follow that and answer that and be on the lookout for video two in this masterclass series with Joe McCall. And we'll see you on the next video.